Hey, look what we just found here. Four megabots push gray button. Nah, I'm not, I'm not a gray button pusher. Let's see if anybody's home. Hey. Oh, hello. Hello, would you guys happen to be a place that manufactures giant fighting robots? I think we might have a few of those here, actually, yes. Uh, do you have an appointment? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do, I totally do. Come on in. All right, sir, well, I would like to ask, what, what is your name? I mean, you're obviously the doorman here, right? Sure, uh, my name is Matt Orline. I'm the doorman here at Megabots. Okay, okay. And uh, so, so what exactly are you guys doing in this little building here? Uh, we are bringing all of the epic giant robot battles of science fiction to reality for the very first time. So uh, this is kind of the, uh, the bot cave, as we call it, uh, or Fortress One, uh, better known in our YouTube videos. Um, this is where we're building all the giant robots. Um, there's one you may have heard of, the Mark II, which is the one that challenged Japan to a giant robot fight. Uh, we're in the process of building our next one, which is the one we will actually fight with, the Mark III. Right here is kind of uh, the fabrication area. So this is a welding table. It's where a lot of the big metal pieces of the robot get welded together. You can see uh, we have various drill presses yeah. up against the wall. This tool actually formerly used to drill holes in battleship armor, which is a fun <laughs> little bit of history. And now it's building giant robot armor. You can see we have this uh, gantry crane we've installed up here. This can lift up to 4,000 pounds. Um, it's got a variable speed motor on it. Um, great for lifting massive, massive pieces of the robot. I mean, these every piece on this robot weighs basically as much as a car. Yeah. Um, so there's there's no real like single big assembly that people can move well, around by hand. Well, battleship drill, right? So we can kind of assume everything that goes on this is kind of derived yeah. from that, right? Just so. to give you a sense of scale. Japan's uh, going down. Japan's going down. This is one of my favorite parts of the shop, the weapons rack or the armory. Um, you can see some of the weapons we plan on using. Uh, the big drill, the big chainsaw. We've got a logging grapple over there. Wow. Uh, pretty ridiculous, pretty ridiculous stuff. And of course, painted in the stars and stripes, uh, very patriotic paint scheme. Uh, I'm definitely feeling the America vibe here. Definitely so, America. Exactly, You've got to make our country proud. Over here, we can see part of the uh, canopy being, uh, being put together here. This is the polycarbonate windscreen for uh, the cockpit. Keeping the pilots safe, so. That looks pretty thick. That looks, that looks like it came off of like the window in a bank. We made this custom for the Mark III, so it didn't come out of a bank. I did not, in fact, <laughs> rob a bank for the Mark III. Okay. We cannot cur confirm nor deny. At least it looks like you guys are putting some emphasis on protecting the pilot. We're putting a little bit of thought into who, it. I'm curious, who is the pilot going to be? Uh, so the pilots for the Japan duel will be myself and also my co-founder, Guy. Um, we, there's two seats inside okay. this giant robot. Ooh, fantastic. We can't wait to see that. That's going to be cool. So uh, I'll be doing the gunner role and controlling the weapon systems, and Guy will be sort of driving the robot and controlling the legs and dodging and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, it'll be an interesting okay. pilot dynamic as two people try to work together to control this big metal monstrosity. I feel like I've seen a movie like this before where there was two people piloting a giant robot. I can't remember what it was called, though. You know, well, maybe we'll come back to that later. Yep. We can take a look over here. This is sort of the machining area. So some of the more precise pieces of metal that get put together. Uh, this is a manual lathe uh, and, a, and a mill over there that has some CNC capabilities. I guess you'd call it like a two, maybe yeah. two and a half uh, degree of freedom. I have um, the toy versions of these in my garage. I have like a little X carve, and I have a little 3D printer, and you know, just yeah. dainty little things that don't really do anything with battleship armor. Yeah. Speaking of 3D printers, we have a 3D printer over here. This can actually print uh, carbon fiber uh, as well as Kevlar, which is very interesting. So um, we're using this. This is from uh, this one's from Mark Forged, um, and we're printing out some cool camera mounts to keep the cameras yeah. that are mounted to the robot May I? safe. Yep, absolutely. You know, they actually were going to send me one of these to review and I turned them down. You know why? Because they told me how much it costs for the material. This is not a cheap machine to operate. You should have told them to give you some review material as well. <laughs> I just heard the air horn honk twice, which means the yard is now 
safe to go out in. So maybe we'll take a peek out there uh, and see what's going on. All right, so now we're finally outside. What is uh, what is this little building we got behind us? It looks like it's uh, protecting against a battle. Yeah, so behind me is the testing bunker. Um, so this is where all the controls and software engineers sit uh, as we develop the software and power up this crazy system for the very first time. This is like super, super dangerous. I mean, we've got 4,000 PSI hydraulic system. Whoa. There's a Corvette engine in this thing, uh, clocked at like 430 horsepower. I mean, this thing roars, three massive hydraulic yep. pumps. Uh, it weighs something like 12 to maybe 14 tons. Uh, so, so something like, some, right? It, it's roughly, a little nervous to get on the scale. Uh, we don't have a scale big enough to measure that uh, yet. <laughs> so when we're powering this thing up for the first time, we want to make sure everybody's protected, everybody's inside this uh, container. It's got bulletproof glass in front of it. So if parts go flying, uh, nobody gets hurt. Megabots cares about their employees and doesn't want them to die. That's admirable. Dun, 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 dun. You all having fun building robots for a living? I was told I wasn't allowed to have fun. <laughs> I know my mom said the same thing, but look at me now. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, nice robot, dude. Thank you. That's a huge bitch. All right, Matt, tell us a little bit about this robot here. So this is the Mark III. This is uh, to, again, 12 to 14 tons uh, of, uh, of metal uh, and hydraulics. We should probably actually not stand under it because uh, the only thing that's keeping us from death is uh, a few little check valves uh, inside there. So let's hope that the software is running without bugs, um, but we can certainly walk around it. Okay. So. Um, right now, we have one of the weapons on the robot. On the right arm is this massive thank you, a claw, which is actually a, a logging grapple used in the forestry industry. So you'd, you'd use that thing for picking up a, a bunch of tree trunks and throwing them into some kind of wood chipper uh, on some other type of equipment. But we, So you we, guys are testing some prefab stuff, like stuff that's already available on the market that you just bolt onto the sucker and go, or you have to heavily modify it? Yeah, so uh, you know the, the, the motor, I again, is from a, a, a Corvette engine basically like an it's, it's, it's it is an ls3 it. um the transmission is like a marine transmission something you'd find on a boat uh the hydraulic pumps are something you'd find in a piece of construction equipment uh as well as a lot of the hydraulic actuators i mean a lot of that is repurposed construction industry uh actuation wow. um the valves are like incredibly super high speed uh super fast valves some of the fastest valves in the world that that make this system respond uh very dynamically and look Look like it's almost alive. So no plastic sprinkler valves were in, involved in the creation of this? No plastic sprinkler valve. Yeah, all, all of these are their hydraulic valves, so they're all running at like 4,000 PSI, wow. uh, uh, much, much higher pressure than uh, sprinkler well, valves. Hydraulic leak's going to cut someone's arm off, basically. Uh, we're going to try to prevent that. Completely custom control software running on this uh, that's been uh, really developed over, you know, over 10 years uh, uh, from a research group down in Florida, IHMC, that's been helping us out. Um, uh, again, it seats two people, just like the Mark wow. II does. The gunner's in the front, the driver is in the back. Um, we've got the, the big bumper bull bars on the front that give it that kind of police cruiser look for uh, protecting the cockpit and, and giving the ability to kind of ram people out of the way. Um, and then on the left arm, there's nothing on there right now, but there will be a giant uh, paint cannonball cannon that goes Ooh. on there that can shoot uh, three pound paint cannonballs at speeds of over uh, 130 miles an hour. So if you do the kinetic energy calculation on yep. that, that's, uh, that's, a, that's basically half of a 50 cal sniper round. So, wow. you know, the question is like, when you die from it, do you die instantly or do you die in the hospital from internal organ bleeding? I'm, I'm not really sure, but either way you get hit by one of those uh, unprotected, you're probably dying. So are you guys kind of hoping that the Japanese are gonna go with a screen instead of a polycarbonate thing so the paint can kind of penetrate through? Um, I don't know what they're gonna come up with. Uh, if I were to guess, I would think they're gonna have uh, probably a polycarbonate windshield. I don't think they're gonna do the screen thing. The paint cannonballs are great at knocking off cameras, blinding the Ooh, opponent, okay. uh, maybe hitting some of the more sensitive electronics on the robot, um, but they're probably not gonna do a ton of damage to like really thick steel armor. So, gotcha. you know, from range, you can kind of take out some of the more yep. critical spots on the robot, and then you close in, and then you get in there with the claw. Uh, that's that's kind of the battle plan we're working with right now. There's gonna be some strategy here, for sure. But honestly, Japan, 
I'm telling you, mesh. You want mesh. I think that's your best bet. Wink. Go go with the mesh. It's going to be great. You're, you're going to want to stay cool inside there, you know, in the heat of battle. So I think uh, I think mesh would be great for a little bit of ventilation. So, Definitely check out the mesh. So are you legitimately nervous, like, when you think about that at some point you were going to climb into this thing? Like, like I have to imagine, because I'm just looking at it standing next to it, and I'm actually kind of, like, shaking a little bit. Like, you're going to be sitting in that thing while somebody's trying to do harm to it. Yeah. Uh, so it's got to be a little bit dangerous to be exciting. Um, we are we are taking uh, as many precautions as we can. The pilots will be wearing helmets, flame retardant suits, okay. uh, a neck brace. The same thing you'd see from someone who is a driver for like a uh, Monster Jam or like okay. a Formula One car. So really trying to protect against those uh, you know high energy uh, impacts as best we can. I mean we're inside you're inside like a full roll cage there, five point seat belt harness, um, very cushioned seats. Um, you got the, the polycarbonate bulletproof glass windscreen that we may or may not have stolen from bank. <laughs> Matt, just don't die, okay? I'll do my best. I'll do yeah, my best. I mean, if you do, this video is going viral and I'm going to make a ton of money, but I'm just saying don't do it. I mean, this I'd could, rather you survive. This could be the last footage of me uh, alive. It could be, actually. could be very valuable. No, that arm could, he just said the valve could fail and that thing could fall on us and crush us. Very. Then we'll, then we'll both be famous on the internet. Awesome. Cool. Hey, Jason, they're going to turn it on. <laughs> Three, two, one. Right. No, there's motion. That's shoulder pitch. Uh, I'm locking in. Three, two, one. Movement. Oh, there it goes. All right, shoulder roll. Whoa. And yeah, it is. Uh, valve three on manifold two. Nice. Yeah, that it was moving kind of quick. That was quicker than just bias. Three, two, one. Squatting. Well, that was one of many tests that you guys have conducted here. That was really cool to see the robot, especially the squatting. Yes. That, that was epic. So you guys look like you're in good fighting form, and you're yeah. ready to take this thing to Maker Fair, huh? That's right. we got to work on a few speed improvements. Tonight, right now, we're just, like, testing the functionality before we really unleash the full power of this thing. Found a few bugs. Team's uh, taking a look over here to get those buttoned up, and uh, hopefully this thing will be ready to crush cars at Maker Fair. Awesome. Well, you guys heard it here. Thank you, Matt, so much for showing us the robot. If you guys want to see more about this robot, all the links down in the video description. For Megabots, you got to hit that little expand button. I know you all lazy, but you know it's down there. It says expand. I can't point an arrow at it. Actually, I can point an arrow at it. I yeah. forgot. I can edit. There's an arrow right now pointing down. There. Just click the button. You want to watch it. this thing fight? Yeah. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, and you need to because I actually have more subscribers than them, and that is not right when stuff like that happens. We're building fighting goddamn giant robots here. Like, come on. And I sit, yeah, and I literally sit in front of my computer and just talk for an hour every day. How is that fair? That's not fair. That's like subscriber inequality here in it America. Is. It is. You guys can fix subscriber inequality by clicking that link. And where's that link at? Right here. I don't know. Here. Well, that, don't worry. The graphics on the screen. Down you don't here. even have to do it. Follow anything. my fingers. Follow the fingers. There you go. Nothing fell on us. We didn't die. So I'm pretty sure that uh, made in America actually means something. In Japan? Japan's going, going down. down. On this thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right well everything good must come to an end and to think all that cool stuff's behind this crazy gray door with plants growing over it you guys really should hire somebody to take care of that all right man you take it easy we will see you at maker fair peace
This robot has been driving for all of three days, folks. You're looking at a two and a half million dollar machine that took a year and a couple months to build by a team of 18 fabricators and engineers at Megabots, a controls team sitting over there at IHMC working on the control systems, Allen How Technologies working on the track base, and it started driving all of two or three days ago. We have another couple months of testing and training. We have to bring the robot up to full speed. This is about 25% speed for your safety, ours, and the robot's safety. So, really with the help of our Kickstarter backers, we're now getting to take rides. Look at that, look at that. That's right, boom. Our ultimate goal is to make a giant fighting robot sports league. We want to bring the mecca of science fiction and fantasy to life and then actually fight them in arenas and stadiums as a combat sport. Imagine UFC in a stadium where you're watching Max go at it instead of human beings. That is the dream. We're getting there one epic robot at a time. Consider this a prototype. We're gonna fight Japan, but then it's all about making the larger vision come to reality.